I am stoked to have my next guest join us. She is a talented singer and songwriter who just released her debut EP called Falling Asleep at the Wheel. It is Holly Humberstone. Holly, how are you? Hey, I'm great, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to like be here talking to you. Thank you so much. No, thank you. I know this is kind of the norm now, doing these Zoom calls and seeing these glowing faces. Where are you? Definitely. So I'm at my childhood home where I grew up, which is like sort of an hour or two north of London. Um, so it, yeah, I live in the countryside, so it's pretty peaceful. I've been here like the whole of like the COVID situation has been going on. So I'm pretty lucky to be kind of out in the sticks and not like somewhere in the middle of London. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Awesome. I got to start out with noting what you're wearing right now, because ever since you posted about the uh, Fifth Sister Swap Shop, I'm sure yeah. everybody's analyzing what you're wearing, and especially your top. I'm wearing so, a uh, Where is this hoodie from? Is this yours or yeah, is this something so... that you swapped? No, this is actually one of my sister's hoodies that I've like taken. I set up the Fifth Sister Swap Shop and I called it Fifth Sister Swap Shop because like me and my sisters have like so many clothes between us and we're all like a similar size so we just like take each other's stuff all the time um so i think this is my younger sister lucy's top and i wore this if you look carefully at the end of the falling asleep at the wheel video i'm in a car wearing this jumper um and yeah just like i just wear like the same stuff over and over again kind of thing and i feel like it's it's kind of like I guess it's a good way to like save money and to not have to buy new stuff all the time. But um, yeah, I just thought the Fifth Sister Swap Shop would be kind of a cool way for me to like get new stuff that I actually like pretty quickly without having to like go out and buy like brand new stuff, like brand new items of clothing every time I need a new item, you know? Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm excited. I've only done one swap so far, but I'm excited. Ever since you posted that, I went through my wardrobe at least a couple of times to see, okay, what can I, what can I swap with her? And I'm like, no, I want to keep that. No, I have some <laughs> sentimental value to that. I feel like, I don't know, it's going to take me some time to figure out what I can swap with you and I'll slide into your DMs. Yes. Thank you, man. Yeah, I feel like I'm exactly like that as well. Like, I, I'm, we're kind of like hoarders in my family. So it's really hard for us to let go of a piece of clothing that's like a perfectly good piece of clothing that's like I obviously still really like the hoodies that I'm getting rid of but like I've worn them so many times I cannot like excuse another like wear of them so yeah I have to have to give them away you have to just bite the bullet and do it don't you hats off to your parents by the way uh they really supported you and encouraged your creative aspirations and a lot of parents in other situations may want their children to follow in their footsteps so you could easily be in the medical field right now or something like that but they really exposed you to a lot of different kinds of music from Radiohead and Fleetwood Mac and yeah. all the way to like Led Zeppelin which I found interesting so I'm curious did they expose you to American music like Van Halen it's very top of mind right now with the passing of Eddie um, I haven't no I haven't heard of them I haven't I'll, I'll look it up we were exposed to stuff like just like a lot of the stuff on the spectrum, like, yeah, Led Zepp, we were obsessed with Led Zepp. Like, I think their album, Physical Graffiti, is like a family favorite. I love the album. Um, yeah, lots of Radiohead, like you said. Um, obsessed with like Regina Spector as well. Like, she's like, another family fave. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I've never heard of them. I'm gonna look them up. They're probably like really famous and I'd, I've never heard of them, but... Which is totally um, fair. I was just curious because of the recent news and your exposure to classic rock, so... But they're definitely like the poster child for that L.A. hard rock sound in the 80s. I'll probably like them then, yeah. Oh, you got to check them out then. Okay, I'll look them up. Please. That's I can't wait homework. to hear what you think about them. Uh, congrats on your EP, by the way. Uh, a lot of nice words being written about it. We have been so supportive of you, and I personally just love your music, and the topic and subject matter of the EP and the music is certainly revolving around this failed relationship. And I'm kind of curious, when was this snapshot in your life uh, taken? And when did you start putting together this material? So I started writing the EP about two years ago and like it's kind of come together over the course of two years. And it took like a lot of like experimentation and a lot of like really bad songs to come out before like really finding like who I was within the music 
that I was making and sort of the I wanted to be making. Um, so it took ages actually to like sort of discover what I wanted to do. Um, and I think I remember writing Falling Asleep at the Wheel and just being like, oh, like light bulb moment. This is like, this is me. Like this is, this is like the direction I wanted to go in. Um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. But it took absolutely ages to like really figure out who I wanted to be and like my little world within within music and stuff. Well, your intuition was right on the money. Your music is awesome. And with regards to your lyrics, you once said, if they're not tattoo lyrics, they don't go on the record. And I got to say, for me, it has to be, uh, throw me in the deep end. I'm ready now to swim. Yes. And I know that might be some other people's, but I'm kind of curious what other people might have said and uh, told you. Yeah, it's been really cool, like, especially with that song. So I think that's like probably the most personal song on the EP. And like, I think that's like the most vulnerable I've ever been in a song. So like, I'm not really surprised that you said that would be the song that you'd pick. Um, but yeah, like particularly that song, um, people have, it's been really nice actually to have people message me and say like, oh, this is like mine and my sister's song. And like, I have this exact same situation with my sister or my best friend or something like that. So I think just like being as honest as possible, I'm just not, I'm just getting straight to the point and just like not dressing it up, just saying it how, how it is. Right, and it's not only something that we appreciate, but I feel like it's something that we need right now, especially with everything that's been going on this year with the pandemic, uh, feeling some isolation and anxiety, but then also with the calls for social justice. Yeah. And so how do you internalize uh, the feelings that you've been going through this year, your observations of what's been going on, and how do you think it'll affect your music moving forward? Yeah, I mean, like... I think for a lot of the like lockdown, I've been thinking like, oh, I've got nothing to write about. Like I'm not seeing my friends. I'm not out having experiences and stuff. But then recently I've been thinking, actually, there's like so much. There is actually loads to get angry about, isn't there? And there's loads to write about. Um, so I have been thinking like, I mean, usually I'm writing about um, like relationships and like my feelings towards that, like that sort of thing. But like, yeah, recently I've been thinking like there's lots of like social changes in there and I don't know, that's like far more important than how I'm feeling about, you know, my boyfriend or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah, I mean, there's plenty to get angry about at the moment for sure. Right. And it's not something that's going to be solved overnight and it's going to take all of us to collectively figure out and make change over the course of time. I know this EP has been out for only a handful of months but it's just so good and we're very eager to hear more new stuff and I understand that you are working on something. So what's the plan? So I, I know I've got like a lot that I've got that I'm ready to release, but um, I think I'm waiting for like one more song. I'm waiting for like, I think the whole project isn't quite like finished yet. And I know that I've got like one more to come. I know that I've got something brewing and I just need to wait for it to come. Um, so yeah, but I'm so excited about like the stuff that I have got already, like a lot of it is stuff that I've written on my own. Um, yeah, I'm even more excited about it than I was about the first EP, I think. That's awesome to hear. I know a lot of people, including myself, are really happy to hear that. And at some point, I hope we get to see you here in the States perform live. I don't think we've been able to see you here. And, and you know, instead of people throwing flowers on stage at you, I want to see them throw their hoodies at you to swap with you. I hope so too. You could do like impromptu wardrobe changes throughout your set. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's something I can incorporate into my live set. Thank you. Thank you. You've just given me some ideas. Amazing. Holly, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Big fan of your music and we can't wait for what you have coming up. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. It's been really lovely chatting and meeting you. So thank you so much. Same here. And make sure you check out some Van Halen music. Oh, I will. I will. I will. I'll go do that now, actually. That can be my Friday evening um, lockdown music. Music.